moving. Bloop, 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 bloop. Good. Every year, 12-year-old Jordan Petty gets his lungs checked. Jordan has asthma, and airborne irritants like pollen, dust, and particulate matter make it difficult to breathe properly. Deep breath and blow. When I was younger, I remember waking up and having to go outside and get the fresh air into me. And my mom told me when I was younger, I had to go to emergency a lot of times. Air pollution is not just an irritant. It's a killer. In BC, outdoor air pollution contributes to the death of as many as 250 people a year. Another 700 people are admitted to hospitals because it's difficult to breathe. Next door in Washington state, 80 to 100 people die of asthma alone. Close to 5,500 are hospitalized. Also, I've had to have one of those air steam things in my room to, like, to open up my chest to make it easier to breathe. Residents of the Georgia Basin Puget Sound region share a common airshed encompassing major urban areas such as Greater Seattle and Greater Vancouver. Wind flow patterns move pollutants across our border in both directions. It's not just what we drive, but how we drive as well. Vehicle idling is a major contributor of greenhouse gases and toxic chemicals to our environment. Simply turning off your car if you're waiting longer than 10 seconds can have a major impact on our air quality, as well as your gas bill. Sometimes you can see visible pollution in the air. Because we can see it, we understand that this type of pollution is bad for us. But it's what you can't see that causes the most harm. In the cities, transportation accounts for the majority of all air pollution. As our population grows, so too does the number of cars in our region, reducing the benefit of low emission engines. In addition to cars, some of the highest emissions come from the smallest engines, especially the two-stroke gasoline engines found in things like older lawnmowers and leaf blowers. An older style lawnmower running for an hour can emit as many pollutants as a new car traveling 550 kilometers or about 340 miles. The other half of pollution caused by fossil fuel emissions comes from diesel trucks, buses and the construction industry. BC and Washington state are major ports and ships running on heavy bunker fuel are prime polluters. Fleets of diesel-powered trucks waiting by dockside make the problem worse. The typical diesel engine has a 15 to 20 year life, so it's going to take a while to replace those fleets with these cleaner burning and uh, inherently cleaner uh, engines. And until that happens, we're, we're going to have that pollution around. While heavy traffic is a major pollution source in and around cities, in rural areas, smoke is a major concern. Smoke comes from wood stoves, backyard burning, and land clearing operations. I've had asthma all my life and I have never smoked. A lot of people on this uh, oxygen you find are ex-smokers, but I have never smoked. It's entirely due to a lifetime of asthma and I, more than anything, I have to have clean air to breathe. David Holmes Smith and his wife Rosemary moved from the Okanagan to BC's Sunshine Coast in 1997 to be close to the sea air. Rosemary's had breathing problems for decades and this plastic tubing that runs throughout the house tethers her to an oxygen supply in the bedroom. Unfortunately, shortly after they moved in, they found that the neighborhood wasn't as clean as they thought it would be. The neighbors had a wood stove. Come November there was a lot of smoke. And uh, we also had a lot of the gravel trucks going past us. Um, we were on the route towards a building site for the new school, so we had the, the traffic fumes as well as the wood smoke. So Rosemary and her husband formed the Sunshine Coast Clean Air Society to educate their neighbors about the health hazards of air pollution in general and smoke inhalation in particular. Rosemary's condition is aggravated by particulate matter, a byproduct of wood smoke and backyard burning and land clearing operations in the countryside and tailpipe emissions in the city. Particulates are fine solids that hang in the air for days. Along with nitrogen dioxide, they color the haze we associate with air pollution. They also carry toxins such as benzene found in gasoline and other sources. Particulates can measure from less than 10 microns in diameter, and that makes them dangerous because we can breathe them in easily. The larger particles come from mainly resuspended dusts uh, and mechanical activities. Uh, when you get down to smaller sizes, it 
they're mainly due to combustion products or to condensation and smog reactions in the atmosphere. Larger particulates are called PM10. That's the size of pollen and dust. Very small particulates less than 2.5 microns in size are called PM2.5 and are even more dangerous because they are small enough to penetrate into the deepest part of the lung. The larger particles, the greater, equal to or greater than 10 microns, are filtered out more readily by your nose and to some extent by your mouth. But the smaller particles go in and penetrate more deeply in, in both cases. Technological innovations like hybrid cars and low emission engines are making a difference. The entire West Coast maritime industry from Tacoma to Vancouver is addressing the issue of diesel pollution. The Port of Seattle is converting its smaller vehicles to run on biodiesel. Its container handling machines, including these huge carriers, run on low sulfur fuels. And rather than run their diesel engines while tied up at port, cruise ships in Seattle can plug into an onshore electrical grid. Rosemary and David are aware of these technological breakthroughs, but they know technology alone can't clean up the environment. It takes personal commitment. For many years I have been worried about children getting asthma. It's, it's uh, I, I think it's a help to me too, to have something to contribute. And, uh, and if I can do that, that is something worthwhile that I take away feeling better because I've done this.